And now we're back with Joel Fan here at Fine Arts Forum, and uh, we're going to we're going to ask him a little bit more about some of the key artistic influences and some of his professional mentors as his career developed. Uh, who who stands out, Joel? Oh, there's. Um, I've been fortunate to have worked with some of the greatest musicians um, alive, and um, I definitely think a lot about my teacher at Peabody, uh, Leon Fleischer. Uh, he he's um, was such a powerful, uh, he is such a powerful pianist and powerful intellect, and I literally idolized him as, as a young pianist growing up. Uh, and I was really fortunate to have um, been invited by him to go to Tanglewood at the time that mm-hmm. he was there. Mm-hmm. And then after I, after I studied w- with him at Tanglewood, then he invited me to, to join his studio at, at in Peabody. So that was really one one of the big thrills uh, was meeting with him, working with him, uh, and I remember at Tanglewood working on pieces as as diverse as the Brahms A Major Piano Quartet, you know the F Minor Quintet of Brahms also. Um, you know he was really great at, at coaching Brahms. <laughs> That's great. And, you know, let me, you know, and I had uh, spoken earlier with Joel reminding him that WMNR has a wonderful and deep and longstanding connection with Tanglewood and the artists at Tanglewood. We uh, are looking forward to this uh, upcoming season of another 24 live concerts. And uh, and I think the last, one of the last live uh, performances that I went to, Joel, was uh, when Leon was on stage. Well, you know, he, he was really... Um, for me, uh, such a great teacher. And I, one of my favorite things uh, that he would always say is that whatever I say, the opposite could also be true, <laughs> which is kind of like a, it's a big caveat. <laughs> <laughs> big caveat. But actually, and then he would prove it. It wasn't like he just said it. Mm-hmm. He would actually prove it. He'd say, well, okay, you, can, you might want to take time here, but then you might not want to take time here. And then he'd make it convincing other way, and and so much of the way I think about music performance uh, today was really influenced by him, and it, and I think that he's brilliant in the way that he was able to codify um, very abstract concepts and, mm-hmm. and bring them to life for for a student. So um, one of the things that that I always remember him saying is that you know performance, a great performance is like a magic carpet ride. You know, you get on the carpet ride, and you don't get off till the end, and it you. You you bring your audience you know through that through that experience and I've I've since changed that analogy when I do my match classes I, I say a performance is like a plane ride you know you're on the plane whether whether you want to be or not you, got, so you might as well enjoy the ride <laughs> that's right <laughs> and you have to put up with the bumps and keep them going put up with the bumps yeah, yeah. You no know, but I, I tell that to, to when I do match classes it's almost as a joke it's it's a, it's a, but um but I I think back to, to a lot of a lot of the things that that Fleischer talks about, and, and he would always talk about the in- inevitability of music, like how, again, a great performance is one where, you know, it's almost had to be that way. There, there, it's so convincing that there was no other way of doing it at that time. And yeah. then, of course, you could go and play it completely differently the next time. But that that was a, a real goal. Yeah. Of his, of his teaching was to to make that inevitability possible. Yeah. Uh, when you were uh, in his uh, his studio and working with him, how much time you know during the week would you actually spend with with the, with the maestro? I mean, actually, quite a lot. You know, he studied with Schnabel, Arthur Schnabel, and Schnabel used to teach in this master class format where basically no one had private lessons. All the lessons were group lessons, and and so um, in Fleischer's studio, it, it was the same thing. Uh, we all were able to to see everyone else's lessons. Mm-hmm. And there, were, there were six on Monday and six on Tuesday. So that's 12 hours a week. You get to, you get to watch, um, um, you know, a, a truly great musician and great pianist um, solve problems. I, I think a, and a lot of, of music making and practicing and learning music is, is actually problem solving. Mm-hmm. You know, you, mm-hmm. you, 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 you realize something, um, you want to work on, a, on something here and how do you actually... How do you actually? What's wrong, or not? Not what's wrong. It's it's not about right or wrong, but what could be better? Right. What could be different? And and what are, what are the ways you have to practice to achieve your result? Yeah. And so he was really really good at that. Yeah, I really uh, take what you what you say. Uh, I think it's absolutely right. I had uh, 
the privilege about two years ago to attend a, a group organ lesson at uh, my alma mater, Trinity College in Hartford, and there were six students, and you know we were there for about three and a half to four hours, and there was a lot of problem solving going on, you know, uh, with, uh, with with John Rose, who was the professor, and uh, it was amazing how you know uh, how much you learn with even when you're not on the bench yourself, and and uh, so that sounds sounds fantastic. What a great experience for you! Oh, absolutely, yeah, and actually, um, part of it is also. Um, just kind of noticing patterns because what what happens is is um, someone like Fleischer he's he's really seen it all and he's been through a lot of experiences and so he's able to convey to his students different principles and different patterns to look for. Mm -hmm. um, so 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 you're not really inventing the solution every time, but you're relying on you know analogies and, and what's worked in the past to come and maybe and then of course your own creativity and inspiration to, to come up with new solutions. Right, right. Well, we're going to hear some of that uh, creativity right now uh, with another segment of Music by Joel Fan. And this segment uh, by Joel is a work completed in 1917 uh, by Sergei Prokofiev, the Sonata Number no. 3 in A minor. <laughs> 